Howdy, folks. Now, you may be used to this as an engineering and architecture channel, but today, that changes. I've stopped showering, my wife has left me, so logically, I'm transitioning the channel to anime power scaling. And while none of that is exactly true, today's video is going to participate in a power scaling of sorts. Using hard maths and real numbers, we'll see by the end of the video who the strongest anime protagonist really is, by at least a certain metric. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, instead of power scaling based on size of explosions or how well they performed at that punching parlor game, like an early 20th century racist scientist, we'll be judging them by the shape of their heads, meaning how strong would a structural member be if it were to take the iconic silhouette of Goku or Luffy or Naruto, and you may be asking why. Many of you, in, in fact, you can stop asking me this because these silly little videos are just the kind of thing I want to make on my channel, but anyways, a cards on the table, part of the reason for this video is to try out a tool I've been developing for other purposes, but hey, why not test it out in a fun way? So because the shape of a structural member is one of the most important aspects of strength, I figure we can use our favorite power fantasy characters as a springboard to discussing structural shapes. Plus, I mean, don't you want to see who wins? In order to do that, though, what does winning mean in this competition? How can we assess who is the strongest? And there are three primary modes of load distribution in a structural member. There's tension, compression, and bending. Yeah, torsion exists, but that's sort of incalculable for our purposes. And the governing design principles for each of these can be boiled down to the geometry of the member. Tension is predominantly dependent on area, while axial compression is dependent on a factor called the radius of gyration, and bending is governed by something called the section modulus, both of these being geometric properties like perimeter or centroid. So the strongest anime character can be measured by these metrics, however, I'll say that I'm going to kick tension out because if it's just based on area, we'd only be concerned about which goober has the biggest head, and if that's the case, San Juan Wolf from One Piece probably takes the cake, so we'll discuss how to control for that a little bit later on. Now, I'm not going to dwell too much on the derivation for these concepts. There are YouTube videos out there much more concerned with the actual nitty-gritty of these things. I'll link those down in the description and let them hammer the point home. Or if you're looking for a greater background behind the mathematics in general, I'm very excited to partner with the first sponsor on my humble little channel, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning app designed to be uniquely effective where each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a proven method more effective than just watching lecture videos. Brilliant's approach helps you build understanding from the ground up and a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement helps keep you motivated and on track. For example, Brilliant's newly updated math courses help you establish a strong foundation in algebra and then build on that to conquer calculus and beyond to help make sense of how summation simplifications are going to work like we're going to see later on in this video. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash onstructures or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get a 20% off annual premium subscriptions. Again, that's brilliant.org slash onstructures to get started. Thanks again so much to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. And now back to the video. But to describe at least how we're going to get to an answer, both the radius of gyration and the section modulus are dependent on what structural engineers call the moment of inertia, though the more specific title is something like the second moment of area. Long story short, it's a property that cares about where material is within a structural shape. And it's because of this property that beams are shaped like they are. To resist loads coming vertically, a strong moment of inertia about its x-axis is important. Think about a steel beam. Most commonly, these are in the shape of the letter I, and not because it's easy to make, it's probably not, but rather because it's the most efficient shape for bending in a single direction, putting as much area as possible away from the center. Think if this were thin and flat, like a ruler, and we all know we could bend that with relative ease. So how do we go about determining the moment of inertia? Well, the general equation that determines it is an integral about both x and y, but it's much easier to process that data by using a summation simplified like this. Going around from point to point and using some wizard math, it can spit out this critical geometric property for any shape, provided that we have the literal data points making it quite useful. 
Long story short, we're looking for whose head maximizes the radius of gyration and the section modulus, so let me show you how I did that. So taking our bald friend here, I start by tracing a perimeter using a PDF markup tool called Bluebeam. Then in order to set a level playing field, I've opted to scale the shape to the arbitrarily chosen area of 10 square inches or about 65 square centimeters to normalize the size. Then exporting the PDF to the more high powered drafting software called AutoCAD, exploding the shape and taking a data extraction, taking a data extraction, doing it correctly this time, I can get each of the relevant points that would comprise the structural shape, and for whatever reason, th there were always some kinks to work out, but plotting the points to show the shape back to me seemed to be a good tool to check that the input uh, made sense. And I did this for some of my favorites, uh, Goku, Luffy, Saitama, Naruto, some of the most iconic silhouettes, and I did try and select some of the more interesting and unique ones, though generally went for base forms. So no Super Saiyan hair or Gon's adult phase, just trying to give some justification for what is both incredibly scientific, but also kind of arbitrary. So here are our competitors. You're probably familiar with most, but I've also added a control case, if you will, a circle, or let's call him Charlie Brown, as a circle is going to be one of the least efficient shapes. And as you might expect, even base gone probably clears the whole peanuts first. But after crunching some numbers, lots of numbers, lots of, anyway, we come to our two big winners, one for the best girder and the other for the strongest in compression. And in compression, we have the great Goku taking first prize by head and shoulders over, <clears throat> don't worry about it, uh, Tanjiro from Demon Slayer, and then Piccolo, who is basically just Charlie Brown, but with longer ears. And this makes a bit of sense as we're looking for the most evenly distributed shape in both the X and Y directions, not too oblong, which many of the characters are, usually being a bit taller than they are wide. I mean, how many wide-headed anime characters can you think of? So then on to our second winner, best girder in show, the demon fox spirit himself, Naruto. And just like in the series, he barely edges out Sasuke with Saitama somehow not knocking this one out so easily. Similarly, I can see why these performed a bit better, being generally the tallest in shape. So at this point, it's probably just a credit to Kishimoto's large foreheads. And I could have plotted this in a lot of different ways, and I did, but we'll just look at a couple here for fun. Something I noticed when plotting the moments of inertia about both axes is that Sanji and Zoro are actually identical. That is so lore accurate it genuinely made me smile, though Zoro does eke it out by hair. And also, go figure, but Vegeta and Gon from Hunter x Hunter were just about the same as well. I mean, with the spiky hair, that was probably bound to happen. Then way the hell over here in his own little world is Luffy, and I love that. He absolutely would be a rubbery goober just going his own way. I mean, it's mostly because I let him keep his hat, but whatever. And this is all fun and games, though if I were to put these against actual structural steel rolled shapes of identical area, I found that both a 14-inch deep I-beam or a 12-inch rectangular tube both have just about 10 square inches of area. It's not looking good, Bev. Okay, but what about on a plot? So maybe that shouldn't be so surprising. I mean, that's what engineering is. We try to be as efficient as possible with the materials we're given. They say any idiot can design a bridge that stands up, but it takes an engineer to design a bridge that barely stands up. So Goku, Naruto, take your crowns, and I will be seeing you in my next engineering project. So I know that this video, goofy as it is, really isn't the main point of the channel, just making something a bit shorter and sweeter while researching for something more involved and cut from the same cloth that we usually work with. Still, thanks a bunch for sticking for the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, who else would you have expected to have seen as part of the study? Any recommendations for future videos on architectural engineering? All that good stuff. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Adios.